Diabetes is a chronic disease that occurs either when the pancreas do not produce enough insulin or when the body cannot effectively use the insulin it produces. Insulin is a hormone that regulates blood glucose. The number of people with diabetes rose from 108 million in 1980 to 422 million in 2014. Prevalences have been rising more rapidly in low and middle class income countries than in high income countries. Welcome to the Good Health Show my health kids. Today we are going to discuss about onset of diabetes in higher in low in the generation which is my generation. So doctor uh, the question here arises is why my generation people or the younger generation people you are having more fit and a healthier life but still diabetes is somewhere silently hitting us especially our age group in our age is why so so uh, there is a contradiction there so what you said was that your generation has got a fitter and healthier uh, lifestyle yeah so i tend to disagree with that because Okay, I'm half a generation, maybe my gen, half a generation above you. So yeah. the generation above me, mm-hmm. so they are the people who had the best lifestyle. So what's what's right with their lifestyle and what is wrong with the current generation's lifestyle is that basically directly or indirectly, everyone has stopped working out, exercising. So you will go to the gym to work out. Yeah. Why do you need to go to the gym? Because otherwise your daily activities. Are done with minimal exercise. Well, on the same, on the on the other hand, your grandparents probably would have walked every day. Mm-hmm. So you've taken a car to come over here to interview me. Mm-hmm. But yes. the yeah. same thing, uh, the old older generation would have just walked. In addition to that, we have made life so easy for us now that everything is automated. Everything is so easily done that we eventually. are not passively exercising so one is that second is a diet so life is coming a full circle our ancestors or our elders are not even ancestors our elders had a good lifestyle they used to eat healthy food home grown food food which was probably grown right next to their house without the use of pesticides there was absolutely no fast food so i remember when i was a kid The first fast food pizza place came out, and everyone was excited. So before that, there was no fast food at all. Oh, yeah. So it's like that. That our diets have changed. Everyone's diets have changed. Mm-hmm. And in our quest to make our life simple and easy, we shifted our diet towards a very fast food heavy diet, which is basically very very rich in carbohydrates and fats. So yeah, that's where I would like to correct your doubts. Yeah, but this sir, I say that he is again. If you if you are talking about the fast food, but actually, बहुत सारे लोग ऐसे हैं, especially younger people who like going to gym, running, and you know, doing athletics, other sports also. So uh, that is also like the you know maybe why, but still people end up having you know lot of diabetic issues and sugar, high sugar levels. So why is that? So the thing which I said was life is coming back full circle. Yeah. So that's what's happening now. So now the trendiest of the lot are. Are having good diets now. They're going back to organic. They're going back to shunning uh, vegan. Uh, going, it's a vegan, going vegan, vegan going gluten yeah. free. Yeah. Those are all fads. Okay, yeah. unless you're medically inclined. Yeah. So everyone, not everyone. So a few fraction of the people are actually going towards this healthy diets. But let's accept that it's just a fraction. So bulk of the people, the bulk of the people we interact with in our day-to-day practices. So they are still in that stage of consuming easily available food, which is easy to digest, like, and which is very rich in carbohydrates, like burgers, pizza. So I think the biggest pandemic of the present is junk food. Although things are changing, but I think we are very early in that cycle of the diet changing back to a healthy diet. So although we are moving in the right direction, but not yet. We are not yet there. So, just say, sir, awareness to both are there. That is the bottom line, but. बहुत सारे लोग हैं जिनको अवेयरनेस है नहीं मतलब देयर आर लॉट ऑफ पीपल हु आरंट अवेयर ऑफ डायबिटीज आई थिंक समटाइम्स देयर लाइक डायबिटीज कम शुगर खा लो डायबिटीज खत्म हो जाएगी 
वो वाली अवेयरनेस अभी नहीं है कि यू नो इट्स अ प्रॉपर डिजीज की होना ही है तो हाउ वुड यू एक्सप्लेन और डिफाइन डायबिटीज इन अ लेमेंस सो यू आर वेरी राइट अबाउट दिस थिंग कि अवेयरनेस नहीं है मतलब मेनी पीपल जस्ट कोरिलेट डायबिटीज विद शुगर इनटेक दैट इफ आई एम नॉट ईटिंग शुगर इफ आई एम नॉट ईटिंग टू मच मीठा सो आई एम आई एम आई कैन नॉट गेट डायबिटीज अदर पीपल और इंटीग्रेट जब आते हैं उससे मैं आता है कि मेरे को डायबिटीज कैसे हो गई कि मैंने तो शुगर खाता ही नहीं सो दैट इज वेयर ना वी हैव टू मेक एवरीवन अवेयर दैट इट्स जस्ट नॉट ओनली अबाउट शुगर सो इट्स बेसिकली अबाउट एनर्जी इंटेक अबाउट कार्बोहाइड्रेट इंटेक एंड शुगर इज वन ऑफ द सोर्सेस ऑफ कार्बोहाइड्रेट इट्स जस्ट द वन सोर्स एंड इट इज वन ऑफ द वर्स्ट सोर्सेस ऑफ कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स व्हाई बिकॉज़ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट्स रिफाइंड So what do we mean by refined carbohydrate? A carbohydrate is basically what we require for our diet. What we require for our energy. It is absolutely essential to have 60% of carbohydrates in our diet. But the problem is uh, tendency is to go overboard with these. Things. So what is a carbohydrate? So it provides us energy. So this is in different forms. A simple carbohydrate is something which basically digests easily, digests quickly. So by digesting. Quickly, so carbohydrates are actually converted into your blood glucose. Okay. So this sugar, which are which is being reflected into the blood in the blood, is basically carbohydrate. Okay. So anything, any kind of a diet which cause uh, which is associated with increased carbohydrate intake, so that may be in the form of sugar. Sugar is in that if someone is having sweets, that that adds to the carbohydrate intake. And there are certain food stuffs which are very carbohydrate rich. So Like potatoes, like arbi. So these are day-to-day stuff which we eat. So as long as they're taken in moderation, it's fine. Because as I said, we still require 60 to 65 percent of our uh, dietary requirement from carbohydrates. But we should not be going overboard. And the whole aim in our life should be that we should be cutting down our simple carbohydrates and going towards eating complex carbohydrates. And what do we like include in complex? So my mother all the time she is diabetic, mm-hmm. and yeah she is. So she all the time opens a refrigerator. There is some sweet cake. She just put on and then she's like, "Ek hi to khaya dil mein kya ho jayega? Nothing happens." And beforehand when there is a test for diabetes, like the uh, sugar test, she stops eating something for three four days until so that wo aaye na usme. And I don't know how does that reflect? Does that even reflect your uh, like sugar levels so, and everything? Yeah. it does uh, make a difference in the sugar levels and uh, so jokingly i ask my patients ki exam ki taiyari to nahi kari ha same yeah you are right so when, whenever i suddenly see oh this fellow sugar is extremely good so i actually ask them kya ye to nahi ki last 5 days ke test hone wala tha ki you did not have any sugar or any carbohydrates at all so maybe i will be surprised you be surprised with the number of people who say yes to this oh really yeah so the one advice uh, for patients like uh, are that Do understand that we are not uh, preparing for that report. Yes, we do not want that report to be known. Yes. What we basically want is that the general sugar should be good. As a nee ki doctor ke baad jaare ho to mere report achhi aane chahiye. Doctor ke liye nahi karwa rahe ho, apne liye karwa rahe ho. That should be the clear understanding of a person when he or she is getting a his or her sugar under control. Now another small secret. Your mom is having one small sweet. Yeah. Once in a while. Yeah. It really doesn't matter. As long as it's once in a while, as long as the quantity is less. So, so for her, it's not once in a while. It's it's twice in a day. It's so that is twice. too much. That is too much. Yeah. Really. But the sense that, for example, I tell people, okay, if it's maybe a child's birthday, if it's a festival, have some. Have a minuscule amount. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just to get into the festive atmosphere. Yeah. Absolutely, stopping sweets will actually make them crave them more. And another trick uh, of my sleeve, which I have, is once a person's blood sugars are under control, I give them some allowances. So one allowance which I give to them is like, okay, the sugars are under control. Now you can start having the good carbs. So like, what are the good carbs? As I said, complex carbohydrates. So what are the good sources of complex carbohydrates? For example, if I want to eat something sweet, and I'm a diabetic. Well controlled, so I can have things like figs and ghee in moderation. Then what about jaggery? Jag, I will come to that. Yeah. So I can have a couple of uh, um, 
dates. dates. Okay, dates are good in iron, good in antioxidants. Okay. So although yes, they do increase the sugars, but if you want to have something, have something which has got parallel benefits also, okay. and which is not as refined as something like jaggery. So jaggery is again, although better than sugar, better than white sugar, but it's still a she mom sugar. is putting jaggery into everything. She wants to eat sweet. She puts jaggery and she's like, this, this is okay. So you know, that I, yeah. the conceptions we need to change with the general public that jaggery is not okay. Jaggery is okay if taken once in a while. Oh, that. It's not a replacement for sugar. It doesn't absorb you of diabetes. Now that I'm on jaggery, mm -hmm. so I can have anything. So people start jaggery, start honey. So again, these are to be taken in very less amounts. And don't do this that okay, you stop sugar and start these fancy brown sugars or this, or add uh, what is it called? People keep on saying that uh, sugar card, card, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, uh, jaggery or honey. Don't replace what them stevia? gram to gram. What about stevia and uh, so sugar free? These are uh, sugar replacements. Yes. Once in a while, in the sense that maybe one or two uh, tablets, one or two sachets per day is acceptable. Okay. Long term studies have not shown their safety. But my general dictum is rather than having anything sweet, if you really have a sweet tooth, have one or two tablets of any of these sweeteners, all of them are similar. Plant based ones are slightly better. But the point is that again, select your battles. For example, I have realized uh, practicing diabetes for so many years in our community that people are very fond of tea. Yeah, they are. And they want Tea should be meaty. It should be meaty and it should be twice or thrice a day they want it. It cannot go without So it. that's the recipe. When you're having a cup of tea, you add one tablet of stevia or something. Yeah. So satisfy your urge of having this having something sweet over there. Mm. All said and done, parallelly I also tell them this that um, we are the only country who is having so much sugar, yeah. apart from maybe our neighboring countries, so much sugar in tea and coffee. So I went to Austria, ordered a big glass of cold coffee and asked for sugar. So that lady over there looked at me like as if I've gone bad. Oh. So I realized, this is many years ago, I realized, okay, we are the only country who actually wants sugar and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe we are doing it wrong. Tea otherwise is very healthy. It has got good antioxidants. It's got a lot of good nutrients. It's spoiling it. The two things. Sugar. Sugar. And the other hidden, I'll say villain in our diet, which is full fat day. Full fat day. Yes. So a diabetic having tea with sugar and full fat dairy products is doing himself or herself a lot of harm. If you ask me how, because diabetes is never alone. It's a disease which has which is associated with other problems. So these these three, two or three things together, they actually lead to a lot of medical. So, uh, sir, uh, just a preventive measures so with my side. But then, you know, like I don't want to go to a doctor, and uh, I just still want to see. He maybe I might have diabetes. What are the you know symptoms for early detection? Or you know, आप किसी को देख कर कैसे बता दोगे? शायद अब आपको टेस्ट के लिए जाना चाहिए. Maybe these symptoms can are pointing towards towards the diabetes. So, unfortunately, diabetes does not show symptoms very early. So most of the diabetics, by the time they are symptomatic, are having very high sugars because okay. if you talk about the classical symptoms of diabetes, they are because of excess sugar passing via the urine. So uh, suddenly if someone needs to wake up at night repeatedly to go to the washroom or um, feels that okay, once he's peed, he sees the toilet seat and there are a lot of ants over there. These are the symptoms that people come with, but these are usually the sugars are pretty high. Other symptoms are suddenly someone started losing weight without actually working hard for so it. So the urine actually passes. The this happens. The one I, mean, I just realized one second before the the urine other thing you said the ants also come here. That's that that is how high urine uh, contains sugar. So urine does not contain sugar for people who have normal blood glucose. Okay. So urine has a, a kidneys have a threshold. Okay. So once that threshold is crossed, that is when uh, the sugar will start. Showing up in the urine. So apart from that, there are certain medicines which are used for diabetes, which also cause uh, excretion of glucose in the urine. They are the, one of the less medicines around. But yeah, um, I say prime facing. That is one of the symptoms of diabetes. If someone is having 
features of passing glucose in the urine. Apart from that, because of a lot of passage of glucose, so when the glucose is going by the urine, it obviously has to take in some water also. So a lot of water also goes up, leading to other symptoms like dryness of mouth. Okay, so these are other symptoms which people will present with. These are the symptoms which patients will notice. So there are other certain signs which a doctor can maybe pick up. For example, person who is overweight, there are certain signs of something known as insulin resistance. So the person is overweight, the neck might be black or underarms might be black. So these are signs of insulin resistance. So these are sometimes harbingers of diabetes. So I can make out with this fellow does not have diabetes right now, but it's got very high chance of getting diabetes. So I think those are things which laymen will not be able to pick up, but most doctors, even your family physician will be able to pick up and warn you in advance that, okay, you need to take care. Yeah. So, uh, as we talked about alarming onset uh, or during, you know, in the current generation, so a particular age, I mean, it's like that in a particular early age, or a particular age group that has the most diabetes you guys have noticed, maybe. In this group, mein to, that you have maximum number of people with diabetes in the age group. So diabetes is there from childhood till 80s, 80s, 90s and the onset obviously diabetes is present at birth in some kids and obviously we see patients starting with a diabetes in 80s also. So the commonest age group early on used to be maybe 50s, 60s so now gradually it has come down to 40s and so I am not that worried about this shift in commonest age group. What I am really worried about is the onset of diabetes in teenagers. So let's be very clear that although there are at least 20 kinds of diabetes, there are two main kinds of diabetes. One is type 1 diabetes in which there is less insulin. This is the one which is usually seen in kids. This is the one which is traditionally and usually seen in people below 13, 14, 15, they are thin to begin with and the only treatment for them is insulin. The other kind of diabetes which is a common garden variety of diabetes which everyone is having is type 2 diabetes which is usually seen in 30s, 40s, 50s and usually seen in obese people. Now, unfortunately, this is to initiate this uh, distinction between type 1 and type 2 has been blurring. Why it has been blurring? Because our kids are getting it. So instead of being confident that a 20 year old will be having type 1 diabetes, it's not so long anymore. I have, I have so many patients with that garden variety of diabetes, which is because of being overweight and insulin resistance in their teens. This is what is happening because of a change in lifestyle and physical inactivity amongst the kids. They do not play outside, they play video games, they, play, they watch a lot of. Uh, they have, they have a huge amount of uh, screen time. Yeah, OTTs. They have a lot of stress also. Yeah. So all these things have led, led to an epidemic of type 2 diabetics in, in the young. By young, I mean to say, earlier on, a young diabetic would have been someone in his 30s. Now, I'm not surprised to see 15 year olds, 14 year olds present with type 2 diabetes. Type 1, as I said, is a different entity altogether. So, that is a new epidemic young patients with type 2 diabetes. So, these are the patients you need to identify. I'll just give you an example what I do. So, if I have a couple, both have diabetes, both are overweight, I ask them, what is the weight of the child? And if the child is also overweight or the entire family is overweight, I scare them more about the child. That you guys need to get your act together, you need to change your diet, you need to change your lifestyle. Otherwise, you have got diabetes in 40s. Your kid will end up getting diabetes in his 20s. 20s. Which is much worse because you have to understand diabetes is not about sugar area. Very value but right? Because it's finally about how this disease is going to impact you. Unfortunately, diabetes is a very silent assassin. Yes, it is. You will not come to know. So, most of the people walking around with diabetes will not have any symptoms. The problems because of diabetes, they start later. If you let your diabetes go uncontrolled for maybe 5 years, 10 years, so 
gradually your organs will start getting affected. Your nerves will get affected, your heart might get affected, your kidneys might get affected. And eventually you'll be dependent on so many doctors. You'll be dependent on so many kind of specialities of um, uh, doctors you'll have to consult to keep each of these in check. Unfortunately, you have to understand some, this is a disease in which sometimes time nickel chuck out. So if you start suddenly caring about your diabetes once the kidney problem or the heart problem has started, although yes, you should care about it at that time also, but you have to understand that you're missing the bus. The correct time to start caring about your diabetes is when you get diagnosed and before you develop any complications. So if you take care, good care of your diabetes at, during this time, trust me, you'll have a normal lifestyle. You'll have non-existent or negligible complications. So people who miss this window of opportunity of managing the diabetes well in the first 10 to 15 years, mm -hmm. they are the ones who end up with dialysis, with heart problems, with nerve problems, which although we try to do a lot for that, there are medicines for that, but sometimes it's too late.